You awaken in the forest near your tree where you've stored all your clothes. What do you do? All right, I feel better now, so I get dressed, head back into town. Is it morning? Do we see him? Well, I'm assuming you and a godless slept in the inn with the two iron golems you just bought, probably on the outside, considering they wouldn't go through the door. So, assuming I get into the city fine, I find one of those uh, couch with wheels people, the rickshaws, and I take one to uh, to the end. Well, it costs you a copper piece to get inside the, the township, and it costs you a copper piece to be hauled to where you were going in your opulence. Nice. All right, let's see. That means you're going to be starting play in the Gray Griffin. So the uh, Great Griffin is a little bit opulent. Um, this is the eating area. Did did I ever show you the the primary look from the outside of it? It's very. In I don't think you did. Well, it looks like Notre Dame out huh, there. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. And the the insides of it, if you look towards the bottom, the Grey Griffin's really weird in that it's uh, sort of like magically pristine. You can see over the cliff sides, uh, the beds are rather opulent. It's a uh, wealthy end, which means for every night you're staying there, it's going to cost you two gold. What's really odd about it is it has running water. And to the freak out of many people, it actually even has something that passes for flushing toilet in an almost Romanesque style. And me and a godless stayed here? Yeah, which would have cost you two gold each, and to eat there for a day would be eight silver. Okay. So back to the tactical. All right. Do we see Robo now or uh, Nap now? Where would you be in the eating area? You're going to need to place yourself. For breakfast, I'd probably just uh, go over here. Jesus. Come join me at the table. Oh, oh yeah, that, yeah, this table. Actually, I'd go over here so I can keep an eye on everybody. I can watch the door. I can watch the other door. <laughs> I just come in happy as can be. I I see knock. I see knock, and I I get up and I walk over to him, and I go, "Are you okay? Where have you been?" Yeah, I'm good. I uh, I just had to spend the night in the woods. Full moon. It's over now. I'm fine. I, I like, 
pat him on the shoulder and I go, it's nice to have you back. We were worried about you and we went to a magic shop without you and we purchased some golems and we spent a lot of money, not any of your half, but we spent some money, but we got some island golems and we met this drow lady and she was like kind of a bitch, but you know, like, you know the drow. And uh, she's actually uh, uh, a Thavian wizard. So the Thavian people are here and she might become our allies. And I just like endlessly, just Ezra just endlessly just, da -da -da -da, she just keeps going and going and going. Well, I'm glad you had a good uh, night. Well, if you hadn't had to have your full moon moment, girly, you could have been there with us and you would have seen how I take control. I basically have the Thavian Empire at my beck and call, just so you know. I, mean, I have a little bit more persuasiveness and we could basically have them as our allies at this point. Like, they hate this place just as much as we do. I mean, I think so. She even tried to flirt with me. I had to let her down easy though, you know. I bet. I'm surprised she's not here right now. Looking for well, she's ensuring our, uh, uh, what is that thing called? Oh, our contacts in the Thavian Empire. She's, you know, she is, she's, uh, our, um, our go-to person. She's the middleman between us and the Thavian Empire at this point. So in a way, you could say we're almost technically a part of the Thavian Empire and on the ruling class like we're nobility in their eyes like you should have seen the look in her face when we went to the magic shop when she knew who we were oh, oh yeah 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 oh and i have a um that really gross uh iron stuff in the flask that was actually a demon and i bound it to me so we also have that too um, is that a, a safe well i mean as safe as it can be it's a it's like he, he it's like a he's like kind of like a um, well, I don't know if Ezra would know about genies, but, uh, in the flask, he, he comes out and he's a demon and he's bound to me, so, yeah. Um, the Thavian lady identified it for us, and when she figured out that we killed the, the one lady, she, I mean, she basically, like, threw herself on the ground to praise us, because... That black dragon had been a nuisance uh, for the Thavian Empire for decades. So Doc, kind of... make me an inside check. The truth is being stretched here like taffy. Just... Uh, okay. Yeah, I kind of gathered that. <laughs> so yeah, we got Iron Golem, a Demon, and a Flask, and the loyalty of the Thavian Empire. Thanks to me. A little bit from Conan, but me mainly. And well, that sounds pretty cool. So this Demon, did it, it actually, like you saw it, you know, touched it, like it's real? I didn't touch it. it it's just I, I, I had it taken from the flask, and then I, um, I told it was my servant, we bound it to me, um, got some clothes on, it was naked at first, it made some threats, but then when it knew who the master was, it, it, uh, it obeyed, and then I put it back, back in the flask, because, uh, I don't really know. Basically, I, the events from last night are a little bit boozy. I was, I was power struck. Just know that there was a demon in the flask, and now it's bound to us, and it's going to help us do things. And we got two iron golems. And the loyalty of the Thavian Empire. Alright, we'll move over to Conan here. 
What's up, Conan? How are you doing? Well, Conan rolls his eyes and he says, what has she been telling you? You know, she's the master of all and, you know. I, I wouldn't mind if the demon in the bottle looked like Barbara Eden, but it, it didn't. Yeah, we should uh, just um, just don't trust what that demon tells you. That's about all I can say. <laughs> I would agree. Can't trust a demon. Well, of course not. I'm not. I'm not like I, I know. Okay, I just want to make sure that you know you understand. At the two guys and I'm like, you know, I, I, I really, I really was working my magic last night on that woman, you know. You, you should be thankful of me. I, I got us a, a really powerful ally. Oh, good! You found out what's in there. That's awesome. I mean, it, it's awesome. We know what's in there. I don't know how awesome it is to have a demon. Ho hopefully, it works out. But now, what's our next step? Well, you got the guns, you got the, uh, the demon. We, we go to the capital. We, we take care, we do exactly what we were. I look up to see a woman and I go, what do you want, wench? <laughs> it's like a serving wench to me. A uh, barmaid comes up and asks what you order. Just like a, a your tallest glass of milk, please. I'll have a, an omelet with bacon and uh, a stack of flapjacks. Yeah, I'll have uh, what he's having. And you better not be eavesdropping on us, because I'll know. Barmaid moves off to put your orders. I didn't even have to roll intimidation. Nice. I think after we eat here, we uh we need to take care of business. Like at that point, like I lean into the table seriously and I go, We have to we have to go to the capital. We have to sort things out. With not only with the bounties, but you know, the the problem me and Conan ran into last night is there's a lot of questionable people in this in this village. <laughs> I think everybody is questionable to you, Ezra. No, I mean like you didn't even trust the barmaid who's probably been working here for twenty years. Well, she could be in disguise. <laughs> this could be an elusive trap. I don't know. But I just feel paranoid all the time. But it doesn't matter. What I really want, what, what I'm trying to convey, I guess, is, you know them people we killed that, I lean in real close, like, you know them people we killed and they're wearing them dumb outfits that were tacky? Well, there's a lot more of those people wearing them same tacky outfits. It just, it, and, and we know that they were demons, and I just think that something weird is happening in this village. I mean, we got the the village, other village, and it just things aren't adding up. It, it's just it's weird. It's just strange. Like I'm trying to like Ezra's trying to convey that like something is off in this village. Like you know. Yeah, um, I don't know that everybody in the tacky outfits is. A deep. It could have been just the ones we've seen so far. Maybe the demons are secretly trying to take over here, which is what I suspect. Well, I mean... But if they're in disguise like that, we need to figure out a way to see who is and who isn't. The waitress passes off your orders. Hmm. I, I say 
thanks and give her a go. I, I, I say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, you know them people? Or no, well, the people that are... Uh, I, I point to the, the some of the patrons that are at the bar that are in, like, matching outfits, and I go, who are they? Persuasion check? The waitress simply says they're not from around here. They're they're not denizens of the How long have they been here for? Oh, we have outsiders pass through the town all the time. Many of them come by land, many of them come by different than the other ones. She looks over and she goes, I see people that look like that all the time. just be traveling around. I, I, I look at her again and I go, well, have you noticed anything strange happening in this village? Heard anything weird? I mean, there was just a, a big war in the southern and northern villages. You hear anything about that? Persuasion? The uh most important thing that happened is this area was uh, ruled by a countess. Um, she recently um, went off to war and died. Her family was assassinated. There was an uprising of her household staff. And the newest duke has actually come to town to squash certain things that were going on. There were accusations against some of the barons and baronesses around the cent the the local area, um, thinking that somebody may have been behind the assassination of the uh, countess's family. Hmm. Was there anything else you needed? No, that the information was very helpful. Thank you very much. And I give her a gold piece with like a tip. Is the serving wench a comely wench or an old hag? Many women who choose to be serving witches tend to be attractive because they were lured in by the vast profits one can make as uh, servers. Due to as time goes on, a lot of people fall out of the profession because the tips dry up. It's true of men and women. She's pretty. So I, I I wink at the comely wench, and I ask her if there's anything that's not on the menu that's available. <laughs> Persuasion check. What a breakfast. might be doing well. She blushes. Well, then I look over at Ezra and I just whisper to her, is there anything else we need to know? We need to find out that I might be able to persuade this woman to tell us.
don't know. I, I, like, I don't know. I, because we don't know who, like, I don't know. Because it's, I want to ask her, like, have you seen any demons? But that seems too forward. So, um, maybe, how long the Thavian Empire has been operating out of this joint? So I offer the, the serving wench a gold coin to meet me afterwards, after her shift is over. One, one gold coin? Well, I don't know, gold, how precious is gold? I mean, I don't know. I just... It's two silver more than you owed her for the meal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost like a 20% tip. Like, hey, I'm done with my steak. Do you want to meet later? Oh, uh, let's we'll go. With, we'll go with five gold coins. Oh, all right. well, that's that's probably more persuasive. Roll persuasion. All right. She tells you she'll be by the temple later when she's off work. Uh, this. You got cut off. What? This what? She's going to be near the temple this evening after she gets off. Okay. Then I, I ask Ezra, are we going to hang around? Or you want me to try to find out more information or what? Well, we have a full day ahead of us. I say we... We, we could go to the capital. Um, we got the Iron Golem belt, friend. I mean, I don't see. What about you, Nox? What do you think we should do? I mean, we, we came here to deliver the heads to, so that we're not being incriminated against. Yeah. Is, um,. Is Ezra in disguise? Yes. Thank she you. always uh, has insisted on being an older, uh, differently formed person every time she walks into a town. So that's that's been a persistent beat. Okay. Uh, I'm not that much older. I'm like 20. All right. I look around. Uh, are there any people in the tacky outfits that... Ezra was talking about. In Do you remember the night there was a monk and there were two women with the monk? And yeah, it was like uh, red samurai armor or something, right? Right. If you look over in the uh, corner, okay, that's my thought, but I wasn't sure. Uh, there's was four of them. Yes, I see them. This is also the second time that you've seen them at one table or another um, while coming into this particular establishment. Are they taking note of us or our, our activities? At this time, no. All right, you two. So sometimes my animal nature makes me less patient than I would like. If I start getting a little out of control, let me. But uh, that being said, I'm going to go talk to them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, well, wh why are you going to go talk to them? I'm just going to go ask them who they serve and smell them. I know that sounds strange. Well, yeah, it sounds a bit strange. I'm not gonna, like, go up and sniff their asses. I'm just gonna go over there and there's so many of them close to, you know, stuffed in that little coin. Well, no, I no, should I... get a good sense of what they smell like. Oh, I get that. I, I just... Not like the uh, people we encountered on the road. And that is... 
I hopefully I can smell the difference between a human and them. I'm trying to figure out if I'm reading it right. Other than that, I'd kind of like to visit the magic shop. Oh. Uh, okay. Well. Unless you guys have big plans. The overall goal here is later today, we need to try to talk to the Empress. From the barmaid, it sounds like the highest ranking person who's actually in town at this time is a duke. Or the duke. We're in Cherry Blossom, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're in the big part of the place, right? Yep. You're in an earldom, and it appears that the um, duke, whose duchy, the earldom of... Uh, Cherry Blossom would be a part of when one tenth of all the earldoms within is actually actively here. Well, then I, I look at Nafi and I just go, I, I'm kind of, I guess, a bit confused at this new brash behavior, but I trust him, so I go, if that's what you think we should do, then yeah. I mean, you don't think I should talk to them? It'll give us a sense of whether all of them are demons and we just know this or not. I mean, it's better than threatening them or something, because if they're just innocent humans who are serving some person, then, you know, we're, we'd be in the wrong. I don't want to make assumptions, unless you have a better idea. No, I think you're. I think you're right. If you, I think if you think going over there and talking to them is the best idea to give us some insight, then, then yeah. Hmm. Now I'm just trying to figure out the best way to approach them. Have you seen these uh, red armored people around anywhere before? Like she's a noble, so I had like so. Maybe she would know. Never, never in the village. I haven't seen them before the incident on the road, and the number of them that are now here it just makes me cautious. Because if if this town is, for, and I'm like I'm whispering, like if this town is full of the same creatures, those demons, then we may have a bigger problem on our hands. Because they have to serve somebody, so we'd have to know what their intentions are for the village, for the village people, for the surrounding villages. This might go deeper than just a few nobles uh, trying to gain more power. Uh, right. All right, I'll go over there. I stuffed my face full of pancakes because Liz <laughs> was nervous. Uh, roll me a perception. Um, because this is to do with your nose and I'm assuming you're going to try and hear as well you get an advantage on that so you get one more roll just in case it's hard no what languages do you speak knock uh, I speak common elvish and goblin they are speaking to one another in a language you clearly do not understand. It has a rough and guttural and commanding kind of linguistics to it. That's the flavor of it. Kind of prickly on your ear. And as you're approaching the table, though a human might not be able to tell with their nose pressed directly against their skin, 
about 10 feet from, you can smell that slight hint of brimstone from them, as from the uh, women that uh, were on the roadside. Oh, well, that's all I needed. I guess I'll go back. Yeah, they smell like evil. Ezra, just like, is not happy and a little bit scared. I think, I think we should leave. I think we need to get out of here. And I, and then we need to figure out what, what our next move is. I say we go to the magic shop. Yeah, you guys all done uh, eating? I'd like to just visit the magic shop, at least see what they have. Urza grabs a, like, pancakes and she stuffs them in her face really fast with her hand, and she eats them really fast, and and then she grabs one and, like, puts it in a pot. Well, you don't have pot. to eat. I mean, you can take your time. I'm not trying to rush. Dope, dope, dope. We gotta go. This is a nice little okay. day. Let's go. With a full mouth. And then she runs out the door with a pancake in her pocket. I'm ready to go. I go. Yeah. I want to make sure we're not being followed as we walk over here anyway. So I want to like take a look. Make sure. Actually, I'm probably only saying that because I saw you roll four dice. You can roll perception with advantage. The four women in the red armor were so busy forcefully talking to one another in a passionate fashion, they never even noticed your presence nor fault. But they were agitated about something and really agitated. We should have eavesdropped. Dang, I didn't think of that. Yeah. But they're more soldiers than the real cause of the problem, I think. Yeah. I mean, and Ezra is saying this to Mox. He goes, if they're. I mean, we obviously know what they are. We just don't know why they're here and who's controlling them. And how far this extends into the fate of the other villages. We right. And then there's Ezra. <laughs> she moves into the magic shop, like, with a sense of confidence and... Regalness. And she throws the pancake out onto the, like, she grabs the pancake and tosses it into the grass before she walks in. Alrighty. Look at this place. We can't go meet the, we can't, we have to be professional about this. And I don't want to have to explain why I had a pancake in my pocket. Okay. So this shop, it's just, like, I just look around, like, the aisles and stuff. Like, is it just, like, all kinds of stuff? All kinds of stuff. Virtually all of it's sealed behind glass where you can't actually. Is there are also uh, rings? Yes. And uh, another thing is, as you're walking around, you're noticing... Suits of armor, statues made of stone and uh, iron are actually watching you as you're. Uh, and, you know, you're very aware of the iron ones because Ezra and uh, Agadla both purchased 
large uh, iron statues that stood about 12 feet tall and literally shook the ground as they walked behind oh, you. Oh, they followed us? What the fuck are those? <laughs> I'm like, you bought those. Yeah, I, I told you we bought the iron golem from the lady because we spent a lot of money. I just not sure what I was... Uh... That's pretty... They're going to um, draw a lot of attention. Oh, yeah. They're, they're drawing attention as they walk through, shaking the ground as they go. Well, if you had been here last night, then maybe you could have provided some counsel. Much needed counsel. The hand I know. Fairness. Seriously, I'm sorry about that. Well, you're supposed to be my hand. I don't know. For all you know, I could have been manipulated by her drowiness. It's it's okay. Just now you have uh, new giant pets. Well, these guys are supposed to make up for the lack of soldiers that we have. So they're supposed to be able to kill over a hundred thousand people, each of them. So so you, maybe you can um, station them somewhere so that they don't step on anybody or draw too much of attention. How would they defend us if they're stationed somewhere else? But like they can't fit in the places that we might go. Everybody's gonna see us coming. They're going to know. I'm sure everybody on this side of town knows exactly who you are now because you're the little girl that's you're the lady walking around with the golems. Getting rid of them now is not going to change that if they already know who I am. No, but you can have them stand somewhere and you can come collect them later. Hmm. What say you, Conan? Well, probably staging them somewhere would be a good idea, but where are we going to put them? Outside the village or inside? I mean, maybe we can put them at the stables or just have them stand next to the stable. I mean, no, we don't want someone like... That's not a bad idea. ...messing with them or something like that. All I'm saying is that everybody's going to know where we are because they're going to know where the 12-foot iron walking people are. I'm reading about the golems. They have a blind obedience. Um, I don't really know much about them. I mean, maybe they shrink and fit in your pocket. I don't know. Well, they, they don't do that. That would be nasty. Well, then I guess we tell them to wait by the... How, how, how close is the magic shop in the stable? It, it, it's a little bit of a walk. could they get back to us they appear to move no faster than you do tip well, I mean, they're just mindless entities as far as i know so i imagine they won't move out of the way for anybody they'll walk through stuff if they are able they don't care about damage. They have no emotion. They don't care if they step on a little baby. They don't care if they knock down a wall. They don't care if they leave footprints or kill someone's cat or anything like that. So when they walk, they're just going to walk straight. Well, then, um... You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess. Um... So... Oh. They don't have care or emotion or anything like that they have undying love for me and conan i mean I, I i get what you're saying um ezra goes and she approaches the one of the iron golems um and she she approaches him and she goes look i need you to go stand guard at the stables 
if you feel any any if you sense or any feeling of me being hurt or anything like that immediately come back don't step on babies and kids or animals and uh yeah go by the stables unless you hear me scream or anything i'm not sure it works like that but maybe it does does it work like that um i don't know that they have intelligence if you're on one side of a building and they're on the other side of the building and you say come to me they may just walk through the building and take the whole building down on their way to you. If you're on one side of the ocean and they're on the other and you say, come to me, they'll just walk right through the ocean. Then I, okay, then I go up to the gum or I rephrase it and I go. Maybe, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but they strike me as something that has no mind. It's just a, a machine. But when I say this to the golem, does he do anything? So, you tell the golem to go wait at the stables where they were previously waiting. Maybe you should just tell them to stop and we can go talk to the shopkeeper and maybe she can explain it to you better than us. I say we keep them with us just in case we we need them. I mean, they don't move it very fast, and I mean, I'd rather have them with us than not with us, and just you know tell them not to step on any kids or animals or babies. That's much easier than than uh, we. What if we need them? How about for now? Just tell them to stand outside the magic shop on each side of the door. Yeah, but. And then we can talk to the lady inside, and when we come out, we'll figure out what to do with them. Uh, okay. I mean, it's your golem. You can do what you want. Going in can do, you can do whatever you want. I'm just saying, they may not act in the same nature you think they may act. Anyway, just a thought. I go in. I'm going to go over and look at the rings in one of these cases. I go up to the golem and I say, Your name is Moon. And I go up to the other golem and I say, Your name is Sun. Like the sun. Over one golem. The golems that are inside the shop are not the golems. Oh. Well, where the hell are our golems? On the outside, they'll only get so close to the magic shop. It may be that the magic shop owners were only so trusting that somebody wouldn't turn around and try and use the golem to raid the magic shop, so it stops at a certain. Oh, then I just go inside and like they're, they're already taken care. Of. You come in, Conan. Like I say, as I. In like kind of in like the little entrance. Conan? Yes. You coming inside? I don't even see my character. Uh scroll down a little bit. The, I'm at the front door. Where is the Oh, I see. I'm down the other. I was at the wrong side. No problem. Cool. Cool. So now we're inside the magic shop. Is the same lady that was here last night? Is she still at the uh, counter? No. Damn it. Still a drow female, however. Well, I oh. look at the rings. Are, are they labeled? No. No labels? How are you supposed to know what they are? 
yeah. kind of shop is this? The little shop of horrors. Yeah. Is that... Sacks, like bags and sacks. Yes, they they have them. Are those labeled? No. You might, you might have, have to. Do... I have to go talk to an elf. An elf is my, my, my hated enemy. <laughs> Why so? You, you rangers pick one thing that they hate and are able to get extra bonuses on. Elves are one. Of you seriously picked elves? Yes, elves are stupid little dainty trash dog and little. This is a side I'm so pretty and I'm so smart! Not to this tiger. Oh. Alright, I go talk to the dark elf. At least she's the dark elf. I rush up to eavesdrop. I try to collect myself. <laughs> So this is truly your favorite enemy, is El? Yeah, let me make sure that's right. Isn't that right? You pick one. I can't remember now. Mm -hmm. Oh, my favorite enemies. Humans, elves, yeah, elves, yeah. Okay. And it's humanoid. So, um, what, yeah, what, human. Were you, what were you going to ask the proprietor behind the counter? Say, uh, hi. And she says hello. I'm like, are, is everything in here magical? For the most part, it doesn't yeah, seem like a place you don't sell like normal wares, right? No, I try not to look at her like angrily as best I can. So, would you have any like rings or something that would allow me to see creatures for what they really? So you're looking for something that has true sight? Uh, yeah, if that's what you call it, yes. And you're looking to be able to do this how often? Uh, whenever I'm... What? Maybe like a set of glasses or a ring or... I don't know. I'm not very good with the magical stuff. There's a... A gym that would allow you to check items a total of 50 times before it burnt out. Um, it w would that be something you were interested in? Uh, sure. How much does that run? Gems. They sound pricey. I could part with it for 45000 So that's like a almost a thousand gold of every time I use it. Hey, don't we get a a discount? Like a like a previous customer discount? We were just in here and we bought some golems from you. But where the hell is the other lady Rio? You know? Where'd she go? She knows us. We're her we're friends, you know. I Ezra steps up to the counter. I, I, I stay quiet just on the very, very, very slight chance that Ezra actually gets her to lower the. Ezra, roll persuade. Haha. <laughs> 
Does an 18 work for you? Hey, what the hell? Oh, that was a mistake. I was just looking at something that clicked. He's just it practicing really. over in the corner. He's looking at the axes and decided to swing one around. Accidentally hit the. No, uh, with perfect grace, not hitting anything or damaging stuff or holding us liable. The proprietor behind the counter looks at you and goes, "You're the one that purchased the two guys." Of course, I am. So you were also the one that had the demon in the bottom. Oh yeah, of course, that's me. And I look at, I look over at uh, Nock and I wink and I go, see, told you. So did you want to work out a trade? No, look, you're not getting the demon, okay? Let me make that clear. And, and, and another thing, why are these true flasks things so expensive? This is crazy. I'm, I'm a, I'm a member here, or... I was just gonna say, I could offer you, uh, two more golems and the gem for the demon in the box. What do you know about this, this demon? Well, knowing things is a stock and trade. What would you be willing to pay me for that information? Since I'm feeling benevolent, I'll allow you to say hello to the demon, or look, if you will. I think that we should just keep the demon for And I can't afford the gem, it's too much. I was like 4,000, not 45,000. And I don't think you're going to come down that much. But. So forget the gem. How about bags? Do you have. Do you have. Like. Big bags that hold. Uh, tons of gold. She. It's she like said, we have the sack you, we have, the haversack we have. Are you looking for a haversack? Are you looking for a portable hole? Are you looking for one of the types of bags of holding? Bag of holding. The bag of holding actually has weight to it. You typically get a better deal simply using a portable. The, the big thing is knowing how to safely use extra dimensional spaces. Some people mess up with that and they get sucked into a astral void. No, I don't want anything that's going to, I'm going to fall in. I would just like like a, a a bag or a pouch I can open up, drop things, reach in there and grab whatever I want out. But holds like tons of gold or sticks or whatever I want to put in there. Well, you could put 18 million coins in a single portable. Could I put the portable hole in a bag and then open the bag and drop stuff in? Are you talking about a magical bag, or are you talking about a regular bag? Oh, a regular bag. Yes, you can do that. So just so we're clear, I can open a bag, put the portable hole in there, and then whenever I want... So it would basically turn the bag into a bag of holes. The portable hole folds. If it were lined on the inside of a surface, it would still be a portable hole. The space past the the lining membrane of that portable hole uh, would be a flat surface, even if it were a curvature where you placed it. it am I making sense? Humanism. Knock is, is not the most intelligent being on the planet. So, no, you, I, I, I think maybe I didn't explain myself. I have a lot of gold that currently someone else is holding for me. 
I want to be able to take that gold and hold it myself. It's more gold than a person is able to carry on their own. Well, then the question is, do you want to carry 100 pounds or do you want to carry no weight at all? Well, I don't want to carry 100 pounds, so... Then you don't want a bag of holding. What you would want is a portable hole. It's a much more efficient use of space. So has Ezra been, is her haversack, has she been struggling carrying this thing around because it's, a, you know, 300 pounds? All I'm a red dragon, man. Well, did, did you just say that out loud? No, I mean, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm thinking back, like, has she been struggling carrying this haversack full of all our gold? Because we had a lot of... Struggling. I, I mean, does it look heavy? I didn't know that's how they work. I thought whatever you put in there is just, you know, whatever weighs next to nothing. Well, a straight bag of uh, holding enchantment will have the heaviest ratio of weight to what you're carrying out of any of the different types of things to do. The thing is, a, a portable hold has no more weight than a silk handkerchief, even if it's got 2,000 tons within it. All right, can I see a demonstration of this portable hole just to see what it looks like and how to. Yeah, she says, sure. She walks in front of you. Um, she gets out a personal item, puts it on the floor. There seems to be rows upon rows upon rows of uh, barrels within the inside of it. And the hole that she creates is a six foot diameter that goes down several feet, about 10 feet. And then how do you close it? She just folds it like she's folding a handkerchief, but you fold it by going underneath the hole and then fold it. A big six foot tablecloth? Is that what you said? Pretty much. Except for one actually leads to a extra dimensional space and it's a rounded. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to kill myself with this thing, right? I'm wary of magical stuff. All right, I'll buy one. How much is this thing? 55,000. What? Jesus! Are you. Why is everything so expensive? Because it's magic. Who's making these items? Uh, people who toil away on making things like this for years. Can I get like some sort of discount? How about if I give you a really, really nice magical katana? Oh. No, you can't give her that. She's... Yeah. Forged yeah. somewhere by a guy I don't know, taken off a guy I don't know. So you give her what? One of my plus one katanas. This will drop a thousand off of the price. How much it's the simplest and lowest uh, value enchantment you can have on a magical. Literally, the person who enchanted this was able to do it within 10 days. How much that portable hole? Uh, how long did that take to make? More than a year. How about we, Ezra leans across the table of the counter and she goes, How about I let you see the demon and talk to the demon? And you lower the price to nothing. Or you'll never see the demon, and you'll never talk to the demon, and the only recollections you'll have is words from another. Possibly more knowledgeable than you. Roll me an insight check. Is wisdom my dump stat? It is. Never mind. 
No, uh, eleven's enough for you to understand this. The, there is an interest for the person to get that, but this person's dealing with such a volume of different things that are magically inclined that as special as the demon bottle is to you, um, and as much as she's willing to trade for it because she thinks she can upsell it, this is like going to Bill Gates. I have a dollar, and you'll never see this dollar again. It's a special uh, dollar. Yeah, there's just no hint of stress in the face whatsoever. Maybe, maybe mild. I, I look at her and I go, I mean, we bought some, the iron golems from you, and my friend here is just trying to get a, a bag, and, you know, like, So there, so there's no discounts. I. I mean, I don't care about money all that much. So, but that just seems like a whole lot of money. I'm wondering, do they sell weapons in this uh, magic shop? Absolutely, they do. Well, then I'll ask her, what does she have in the way of a battle axe or a longbow? What additional enchantments do you want on? Well, I mean, is there something that's more powerful than what I already have? Can I see what you have? Yeah, well, I mean, how do I just... How do yeah. I do that? She's got to take a uh, look at it. One second. Okay. How much was that, Jim? Yeah, she seems to be having some type of uh, problem reading off of your battle axe. Let her try your... Can I cast Detect Thoughts on her? Yes, you can. Because she seems to be having some problems. It makes me think like... How the hell did she get this job? Well, shoot. My detect thoughts is not... What would I roll for detect thoughts? It's putting the spell up there. Well, it should be doing the thing and not. Um... Yeah, it's none of my thing, so what would I roll for it? As uh, you attempt to fade into her mind, um, you're kind of getting like she set up not to have her mind read. Oh, it seems to be higher level magic of some. Wow. And I can't, I can't get through this. No. Well, so I asked if we can make a deal for the gem. If, if I can get the gem for 40000 I'll give her the... And call it a day. What about Conan's uh, battle axe and bow and arrow? Yeah, I'm still waiting. Uh, is there a specific type of enchantment you're looking for? I mean, well, there's several different things we can do with it. We can put an enchantment on your magic items for uh, a nominal fee that'll make it next to invulnerable so it's not destroyed when you're using it. 
as long as you have it in your hand. We have things that would allow your magic items to meld into your body so you could never effectively be disarmed by a town guard or something like that. We have magic items that would burst fire on something, things that allow you to chop heads off with. Um, the more powerful the enchantments, of course, the, the higher the price. Well, for my longbow, if I wanted to make it so that I could set, you know, set something on fire when I fired an arrow. With the same relative enchantment level? I could make a trade with you for something that would be about 10,000 more if you were willing to surrender the original bow. If you wanted it to have um, what we would call a glamour ability, where it could be absorbed into your body and called forth at will, that would be another 5,000. If you wanted something that had an impervious enchantment on it, that would be another 5,000. Well, what's an impervious enchantment? Um... One of the great big problems, for example, is you might be fighting something like a red dragon or, say, like a black dragon, and they might use a breath weapon on you. And the, the biggest problem you can run into is that the items can melt or burn right off of your body, rendering your very expensive magical enchantment useless because it's ash. This would protect it from that. Okay, so then... So to, to improve my longbow, then, what am I looking at? Well, if you strictly wanted the fire enchantment, that would be another 10,000. If you wanted the glamour and imperviousness added to that, that would be a total of 20,000. Where's Leo? All right, well, that doesn't sound too bad. I could I could do that. Okay. And she turns to knock. Did you want the gem in the portable hole? Uh, no, not today. But thank you. For your time. Okay. I'll go wait outside away from the smelly elf. <laughs> How much gold do I have? Oh, let me look at that. I should have had it written down. Oh. You had 52,000. Oh. Down the guild gold totals. I really like that. I really like the little. I like just clicking on it and it's there. Like, not having to go through all my freaking notes. So then I guess my, my bow is improved now, is that correct? No, she trades you a fully enchanted bow for the bow that you have. Like a brand new bow? Yep. Oh, okay. Does it do more damage? Um, he won't know until he starts shooting. Ah, okay. Oh. Is there some place some place that I could actually shoot it in here as a practice no there's nothing set up like that within the end magic shop itself okay how do we know this is insured Ezra leans onto the counter like like really leans onto the counter to like to the point where half of her body is across the counter, and she goes. And showing showing her big boobs is that it? Oh shit! I'm a, 
I thought I was in my other form. <laughs> I don't know. What form are you in? I don't even know. I'm in the big boob form, so it'd probably look pretty vulgar. But, <laughs> okay, um, I do lean across the counter, but not to that degree. And I, I kind of look at her and I go, I go. Well, where's Rio? She's at another store. Another store? Who are you? Or what is your name? Uh, you probably don't really want to know. Humans always have a really hard time pronouncing. I do want to know. You want to say something with two vowels and 22 consonants? Well, I'd like to know how to address you, other than storekeep. Storekeep is fine. I don't like storekeep. And I think I can handle a couple of additional vowels and a name. She looks at you and she doesn't seem to be... How do I put this? Taking your... Your strong belief in your ability to do linguistics, that's your... Well... Look, Storekeep, I... I have some important information. It's important information, the Thavian Empire would... is necessary for them to know. So, I need... so... Who would I speak to to relay this information, other than you? I don't even know your name. So that would be in in regards to which Zulk. Explain to me these Zolkeeps. The Zolkeers? Yes, Zolkeers. If you don't know what a Zolkeer is, you don't have any relevant information for the Thapian. How do you know? You don't know what kind of information I have. This information could... This information is going to dictate the... Basically, this the whole... Uh, it's going to dictate lives and death and this store being burned to the ground. Roll deception with disadvantage. I don't think it's really deceitful. The longer it takes for Ezra to exit the building, the more nervous I'm getting. So, what's your earth-shattering information? Well, I'm not going to tell you. I need to tell somebody... One of them... I need to tell one of the Zolkiers. Tell the wrong one and it could cost you your life. Well... I don't have to... Look, this is above you. And if you want to pretend this is something that you need to know, then maybe you don't know your place. You're a shopkeep. I'm talking about the people who have power. Old deception again with disadvantage. How is this deceitful? Yeah, do you, do you just don't get the impression that she's believing you to any? I, 
I pull away from the counter and I go, you do know there are demons walking around. There are demons in this village. There's, there's, um, there's an amassing of demons in this village. And she goes, yep. I come over to Ezra and I tell Ezra that obviously loud enough for the shopkeeper to hear that obviously this shopkeeper is just an underling and of no importance and that we should leave here to find someone who knows something that could, to, that can uh, help uh, uh, in our quest. I take out the iron flask and I, I, I summon my demon. I'm tired. I'm, I'm getting annoyed. No. I'm getting annoyed and I'm getting tired. I, I say I don't think you should bring the demon out. It's too late. You're not stuck. You're not talking. You're not transmitting. The demon forms up as a large central pillar, almost like a living candle that seems like it's melting with little pseudopard sidearms and a large red. The entire pillar seems to be about 10 feet tall as it looks down upon you and the others. Ezra looks at the pillar and she goes, Rio. The eye looks at you. And then I look at the shopkeep and I go, what do you know about these demons? Because this is our first time in the village and we were attacked by a few of these demons before. So why are they, they amassing, why are their numbers increasing in this village? They hold no threat to the Thavian Empire, is that what you think? The shopkeeper's response is the Thavian Empire actually traffics in demons to the degree that your empire traffics in rice. It doesn't matter to us the way you think it does. And I'm sure that that's going to be mind-blowing to you. But we do not just do business here or in a single nation. We do it across the world, and we do it through multiple dimensions. So you don't care about the fate of this village? She looks at you annoyed. Well. I look at Rio and I... I ask her and I go... Is this common? For the Thavian Empire? Is it... Or is this just her? Look at I look at Ezra and I ask her, does she want me to just put an arrow through the shopkeeper? No. So. These are our allies. It's just this particular drow thinks that she's better than what she is. A servant. Rio was much more polite, and she was much more polite, and I, I liked that. This particular drow does not speak for the Thavian Empire, although she thinks she does. The um, large, waxy figure just looks at you and the shopkeep and doesn't appear to respond in any It's possible that this particular form doesn't even have a mouth. Take another form, will you? I mean, can you do that?
I... Is this your true form, Rio? Or... And last night you were a drow female, and now... Make me a persuasion check. Yeah, um, your captive from a bottle doesn't seem to be very responsive. It's just looking back and forth as if waiting for something. Ezra then just looks to the shopkeep and she goes, I hold no ill to you. I just, I guess I thought more of the Thavian Empire. And I do care about the, the fate of these villagers. And, and if you don't, then I can't change your mind. Good day. Good day, sir. And I, I, I take the flask and I summon Rio back into the flask and I go I whisper to the bottle and I go you and me are gonna have a talking and then I leave and I accompany her out of the store you know now that I think about it I guess the Thavian Empire really wouldn't care about this village. It just seems like they they would have cared, but I guess they don't care. Like, even from, like, a standpoint of just, like, their business enterprise, they just, I guess they just don't care. And I, I, I tell this to Nock and Conan, and I go, I guess the Thavian Empire doesn't care. I mean, and Urza is kind of sad with this news. Like, she looks kind of sad. What are the golems doing? Just waiting outside the door. You put them in the stable. No, they were outside at the point that they stopped before going back in the Okay. Well, guys? I mean, other than a godla or oops. Other than Conan's hot date with the serving wench. The only thing we have to do now is to go to the capital, but I don't want to... Something isn't right in this village, and obviously they don't care, and she points back to the, the magic store, and then what What do you think we should do? Uh, let's go on to the capital. Yeah. Hmm. And Ezra, I, yeah, like nod. We should do something about the golems. Well, we're going to the capital of Takenwood. I think. Yeah, but here's the thing. If the golems accompany us and <clears throat> it seems like a decent walk over to the capital, if anything happens, they trip on somebody or squash something, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Well, did you buy that that bag, that whole thing? No. Oh, you didn't buy it. Okay. I don't think I can carry them, so... Yeah. Why say we go up to the Capitol and we just have them stand up the stairs? Sure. I mean, we're here in this village... To, to to vindicate our name, like you know, like the, the people. That is, are... That's fine, but so just a hypothetical scenario. We're walking down the street. We're on our way to the capital. We're like, "Hey, how you doing? How was your night last night?" You hear a scream. Oh, your golem just stepped on the lady. The lady's <laughs> husband is a no. 
the noble demands to have your head. Now the guards get involved. And it just becomes an entire big mess. Or Ooh. the golem, you know, we take a turn, the golem decides to follow you in a straight line, walks through somebody's house, kills a small family, the dog, the cat, they're, you know, steps on a few baby dragon eggs that are inside, <laughs> walks up, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just think that, well, I mean... I'm just saying the golems are trouble waiting to happen. But they can come with us. If you want. Can we, can't we uh, tell them to not step on children and small animals? And just not step on anybody? I mean... Is that something we can do? I guess you could probably try telling them that. I don't know how they work, but... Well, then I walk up to one of the golems that's sitting outside the magic shop and I go, don't step on anyone or kick anybody or kill anyone or hurt anyone unless they're hurting me or I say so or Conan says so or Nox says so. Now we could try that, see if it works. Does the golem say anything, or does he nod, or...? There's a slight movement of the head. See? You see that? And I point to it, and I go, he knows. And... Okay. And then I... Mm -hmm. A huge breath, and says, off to the capital. I say the same thing to the other golem, and I go, come forth. Let us... Let us go to the capital. We need to clear our names, and then... I don't know. Do you think maybe... Maybe the Baron doesn't know about the demon? Or... I don't know. Ezra looks very... Nervous. So, you're off to Cherry Blossom Castle? Yep. I'm still in my altered self, too. Like, you know, walk to the capital to talk to the um, Duke. And we still have the heads. I kind of want to catch one of these little demons in the, the, the tacky red. With the numbers that they have, if you attack one of them, they're all going to come. The very first Baron's head was sent up here days ago. And the Baroness Yoko as a um, dragon head, um, you shove that in the back. Just recapping the decapitations that are available. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The only, the only other head left is Ezra's, right? Yep, that's the last one that's attached. What? That's what I thought. Pretty weird. I shake the reward, too. And then keep walking. And I tell these guys, if this all goes bad or we don't figure out anything, I want to catch one of those little tacky. But last time we tried to catch them, they just bamfed out of existence. I don't know how to stop them from doing that. This will go fine. We're innocent. And we've been doing a great service to this, to this village. And they should be thanking us. And if not, then we're going to have a problem here. And I stride up confidently.
So we're looking for this Duke guy. Yep, he would most likely be within the uh, castle. There are... He's the guy in charge of like the whole area. Right? Yep. For uh, the countess that ruled here, she had ten barons underneath her. And for the countesses or earls, which are what that particular rank was, there's ten of them for one day. All right, so we go to the uh, castle. And there are gate guards. All right, we walk right up. If it's open, we walk right in. It, it is not. I walk up to the gate guard and I go, we have urgent news for the Duke. Uh, persuasion check. And the guard asks, what would the urgent news be? That's for the Duke to know and you to find out. Please let us know. Sure, Robo. Make me a persuasion check. Oh, suck at persuasion. For the Duke to know and you to... <laughs> Not bad for no bonuses. I thought he had bonuses. No, you little Miss Temper Tantrum has all the bonuses for some reason. I don't know why. I didn't perp I didn't even do that. It's charisma. Oh yeah, then it's Because I bet when you made your character you associated charisma with good luck. When that's not really what it's about. No, I <laughs> charisma with manipulation more and charmingness. I don't have any wisdom though, but who cares? Wisdom is a dump stat. So, uh, one of the guards waves, a house steward comes up with uh, robes that show he's a vassal and uh, asks, um, what would your business with the Duke? I represent Ezra. Oh. And me, I urgently need to speak to the Duke. And only the Duke. No subordinate, no underlings, the Duke himself. I also represent Ezra. And I like, like, saucily, like, kind of like, like, bat my eyelashes at one of the guards. Roll persuasion, both of you. Stuart goes, you represent the Countess Ezra? In a legal way, yes. I have good news for the Duke. Yeah, and concerns to this Ezra. There is no Countess Ezra Lee. And he walks off. I follow him. I right through the door. Uh, so you guys are going to start a fight with a gate guard? No, well, I'm not. I am about ready to tear through this castle if no one stops me. Would some gold persuade you? Uh, would some coin persuade you? And I, I hold up like a, a hand of some gold pieces. 
this is urgent news and as somebody who's uh, as someone who's um, under the rule of others, you know what it's like to have to bring your boss bad news. And it is very important that we get the Duke this message or we could be held accountable and it would be bad for us. All right. Uh, everybody make me an insight. And then... Ezra, go ahead and make me a persuasion. Okay, the first problem is you guys referred to uh, Ezra Lee as a countess. She's not. She's a baron. Um, so that was probably the first trip up that, that happened with everything. And the guy's listening, but he's not willing to take a bribe. I can't keep all this straight. Uh, so, how tall is the gate in front of me? Or is the gate... The the actual gate is twenty feet. Yeah, is the is it closed, uh, or are the guards just standing in front of me? Well, the outer part of it's open. The inner part of it is. Can I cast charm person on him? You can, but within an hour, he would know that you had altered his thought. I don't care. So all we need is an hour. Yeah, we can kill him. I mean, after. I I'm gonna kill, kill him out of spite in a minute. Well, before we do that, let's do charm person. And you are acting more like a red dragon than I am. Mr. Sorry, I'm frustrated. Well, I was gonna do up like a, a pamphlet of like... Because Kara Tur is really, really complex like i was looking through the oriental oh uh, yeah i can't keep countess baroness emperor empress i can't keep yeah. any of that it's i was gonna create like a little brochure and be like these are the villages and these are the the baron the baronesses and yeah but, but i might still do that because i was reading that book and i was like this is a lot this is um i'm gonna cast charm person on the guard so on the guard, or on the, are the, you steward? On the steward, the guy that's holding us from the dude. Okay. What? Why don't I have a charm person on my spell list? He is charmed. You believe. So what are you going to tell him to do? He has you follow him. I follow him and I walk very productively. Within five minutes, you're in the throne room awaiting the Duke. I look at Conan and knock and I go, what's... what's because knock was kind of being a bit angry. I go, let's just... See what happens first. And then see what happens. He might not be aware of the, you know, the guy is in red and I leave. While we're waiting, I cast primeval awareness. Read it to me. Can expend one ranger spell spot. 
uh, to sense whether any aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead are present within one mile or six miles if I'm in my favorite terrain, which I am not. The feature does not reveal the creature's location or number. There are fiends, there are fey, and there are celestials within one mile of this spot. That's what I figured. Do right. you want a second, a break for a second or a two minute break? Two minute break. Two minute break. <laughs> exactly. Be right back. Okay, back. I think I'm like 28 seconds away. <laughs> Is everybody back? Yep, yep. yep. So we're in this throne room? Mm-hmm. I'm memorizing. Is it unique? I mean, does it look like that? Yes. I memorize this. I take in every detail. And I make a little scratch on the, f I make a little X on the floor. I do the same thing. Just a little X. All right, I'll follow suit. I just memorize this place. I commit it to my memory. I do the same. I admire the fancy chair. Are there any servants around or is it, or is it just like empty? The area actually seems unusually empty of servants and so like um you don't know if the servants left if they were dismissed or if a large amount of them um died in the attack on the count countess's family who was previously here. Wow. And then I take in a deep just smell the air. Do I smell brimstone and sulfur? 
Yes, yes, you do. You're supposed to say no. You smell heavenly marshmallows and cook. So the Duke wanders in with something like 30 minute arms and he sits upon the throne. 30 dudes. Mm -hmm. Does the smell of brimstone and sulfur get worse? Oh, here's a quick. Did our golems follow us in? Uh, they're only going to be able to get so far into the building. Just simply because you're going to need 12 feet of crawl space unless you want them battering their way through the wall. Well, how tall is this ceiling? It looks pretty tall. Like they could fit in there. The doorways are only about 7 feet. So are they like outside in the passageway before coming into this room? A little bit further back. They're not in the main building, but they were able to walk through the, the front castle in here. Okay. Wow. Oh. I look to knock and turn on and I go, Do you want me to do you want me to go ahead and tell him? No, oh. I, I wait for him to address us. I do greet him respectfully, and I curtsy in a respectful way, and I go, Good evening, Duke. The steward um, calls him out as Duke Kai of the Tulung Empire. Wong. W O N G. Kai Wong. You could probably get away with just calling him Duke. I did call him Duke, and then he had, he had the steward do the thing, so I thought you were, he was like reprimanding me snottily. No. So, the. Duke sits. There's about ten men to either side of him and two men in front. And they all seem to be at the ready to prepare to attack if it's necessary. Eddie looks at the group of you and goes, So, what's your... I nod in assent. Uh, tell them we've brought two of the heads. We have brought you two heads. Or, I don't say that. I go, we have, I stand up and I walk like a step up like not too much to like freak out the guards but like enough so i'm like standing and i go the assassination on the um the duchess is she duchess or an empress the yoko the duchess she was a the duchess on baroness yoko was an insult to this great village, but there are people who are um, charged of a treasonous attempt on our life that were of innocence, and we bring the heads of those treacherous people, and we have taken care of a vile nuisance to this village. Um, and I, I 
take the hammer back and I, I like, kind of take the heads out and then the dragon head I kind of take out too. Just reminding you, you sent up the first head days ago. It is not in your bag. Oh, it's in the dragon head, sorry. Okay. So, you dump this dragon head on the inside that is large enough that it pretty much goes up to the ceiling within this throne room. <laughs> and, yeah. and um, the guards, of course, all put their hands on their swords. They're going to have to get around the big dragon head. Now I've created an obstacle. This is part of my plan. And I continue and I go, this is who you formerly know as... Yoko! This is Yoko! Yeah, this is Yoko. You brought her in for the crimes. We also took down Nariki from Orange Blossom for his crime. Baroness Ezra had nothing to do with it. She's totally innocent. And the charges are unfounded. There's a great corruption here. And it goes all the way to the top. You should look into it. That's all we need to say. Yeah, and I want the charges on Ezra. Baroness Ezra Lee. To be taken off because they're, they're not true. And I want the lift. I want the, the, the lift of... Basically, allow us to allow the village of Snow Blossom and um, Snow Blossom and to be able to get soldiers. Snowflower, Orange Blossom. I don't want these to be attacked anymore. These need to be able to have. Passage to soldiers. So, make me a persuasion check with advantage. Bit of a lag, like I'll click it and it won't go, and then I'll click it again, and then it kind of goes like a little bit of a delay. Okay, the uh, Duke pronounces that the charges against the Baroness are hereby, and he informs the lot of you that uh, the previous caretakers of the castle had overstepped their back. And have been dismissed. And that the Baroness is literally the last noble left standing in the entirety of the world. So, so that would mean she's basically the empress of these. Or the, would that make... Well, okay, would that make... If that's true, then wouldn't she be the Baroness of all of these villages, then? Like the Empress? Or the Empress Duchess? is several steps up. The Duchess? Duchess would be equal to the guy who just pronounced judgment. You would be the equivalent of the Countess. Oh. And so what he does is he says that he's hereby charging the Baroness to be the Countess, and it will be her duty to bring peace to this area. He intends to leave three days hence from now, and he intends to meet with the Baroness before that time. But he will provide for basic troops for every single Baron. I 
drop my altar self then. And I will let him. I will let her know. I kick Ezra in the shin. Oh, oh, oh! Yes. What are you gonna do? Thank. I'll be on my way. stop the assassination attempts like it just seems I don't know maybe I'm thinking about this too much but I just think that anyone declare it so it seems a little bit not really you know what guarantees do we have that that all of these how do we know that this is truthful? Make me a history check. The lords of the land are judge, jury, and executioner. They have the power because they have the power of death. And a pronouncement is all it takes for something or someone to be wiped. And it doesn't have to be in writing. Oh. Okay, then I look at Nock and I kind of I'm confused, and then I look at Conan and I go, then I guess we should be going then. Thank you, Duke. Thank you, Duke, and I curtsy. And I look at Conan kind of shrug and I'm like you just became countess you should get an inspiration I feel like I well, where do we go from here right. out of the demon land yeah let's get out of here like, I, I, all right let's go so I look at not when we're walking out and I kind of go you're gonna have to explain this to me what what happened in there There's some plot going on here. So I'm not the Countess? Well, we shouldn't lower our guard. Well, you are, but they're just... It's kind of a false sense of security. There's a deeper plan they have. Obviously. Haven't you ever read stories? Well, I mean... The Duke didn't seem to be... He's kind of nice, like a nice guy. Like, it's a, we at least catch a break here. I mean, I'm okay. Well, Ezra is confused. I mean, okay. Then I, you are the hand, so I, you are my advisor. If you think that, I just. It would have been nice to have an ally and it not be a plot or a assassination attempt. And she kind of just shrugs, like, kind of sad. There probably still will be. I mean, he's supposed to meet with you in a couple days. Yeah, but... It just seems so... I thought there would be like a, I don't know, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Everything seemed so weird and off, and after everything we've gone through, it's just, okay, that nothing makes sense here. And I guess I kind of wave to the golems, and I guess we walk outside. I say we I say we we go back to the end and get a private room. 
and we check on our villages with the crystal ball. Sounds like a plan. Okay. I've got a million. We should also test out these golems. A godly, if you're going to meet the uh, waitress at the temple, you're going to have to break off in a bit. Nah, I decided not to. We, we found out what we needed to know. Oh, stand in a row. Yep. Wow. Love them and leave them. Wow. That's Someone's amazing. going to be spitting in your food. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we just go back to the end. I thought I thought they were gonna jump out at us, or I don't know. The guy was gonna I don't know form into a but I don't even know. But I wasn't expecting us to not have a fight in there. I thought they were gonna be like, I see through your disguise and attack us, or just something. It was weird. Can we get a private room here? To like talk privately without demon ears listening. Yes. Then that is what I do. I walk up and I tell her, "Hey, I need, we need a private room." Okay. I look at Knock and then I go, "So, what?" What was that all about? What do you what do you think is happening? Do you think the Duke is in on all this demon stuff? Do you think he's their master? Maybe. Hmm. And Ezra like sits on the bed and she's kinda like and I take the, the altered form off since we're in the the room. And then I pull out the crystal ball and I say, it's about time we actually see what's happening in our villages. Now, this is a crystal ball with pl player audience. Can I cast it? Like, we're both from Orange Blossom. So, how many uses... How many from Camellia? Or, sorry. How many uses of, do we get? See if I can get this put up for you real quick. Crystal balls don't have um, any components that are necessary, and you don't have to cast the spell. Scryings typically last for 10 minutes, and you can do it three times a day safely. Okay, then I want to, the first time I want to do it on the Camilla Village, see what's happening there. How Yoko is doing. Because you're so familiar with your two villages, I'm not even going to make you... And as you check in on the two villages, they do appear to be fine. Is, so everything is just like, everything's okay? There's no, like, people dying or anything like that? Not at this time. We have one... Fry left. The Duke. The Duke. For that, you're going to have to roll a die 20.
Okay. He might have some kind of protective magic or something like that. You can get the empty throne room where he was at and some base things of the areas that are back. Whispers of conversations, but you can't focus it any closer. I look to knock and turn on and I go, we may have to... We need to figure out what's happening in this village. Because I trust Nock, and if he says something's going on, and there's a plot within a plot, then I, I think we should capture one of these demon creatures and, and, and get them to tell us what's actually going on in this village. Now that the Duke gave the proclamation, um, are we able to now actually get soldiers? Yeah, you would you would be able to recruit direct. Okay. And we might want to do that too, like um, get some guards for Orange Blossom, Camilla, and Snowfall, because now we can finally get soldiers to kind of guard and make up for the ones that we lost. Man, I'm wondering if I should go get that gem of true sight. I mean, we could go in and on that. It's been late enough, Rio might even be there. Well, we can go back. To a snowflower, and he's gonna come to us. But that's kind of what he wants. I'm ninety percent suspicious. Of it. It's the other ten percent I worry about, because he could just be being used by demons, or whether he's a demon himself. I just know that there was a lot of evil smell in that room. I could teleport back to the chamber and sneak around. There's a certain amount of danger in that. We could go down to the, the tavern and see if we overhear anything from the, the demon ladies. We can try to lure them out and capture one of them. What say you, Colonel? What do you think we should do? Well, I'm, I'm in agreement with Nock. I think he's got a good idea. If we capture one of them, we'd have to be able to take her somewhere where the other ones couldn't come and try to rescue us. We could try seducing one of the demons and have it come with us. I have no idea how susceptible to seduction a demon would be. Well, we don't know until we try. I mean, how else were we going to capture one? Do we have any magical items that will allow us to, to capture a demon? Um, no. No. I'm we, looking at them. We have a. I mean, we could make one of the iron golems try to grab one of them. And... What about what about any of the scrolls? Can they do anything to 
capture a demon? Scroll of binding, of planar binding. Ooh. Yeah, we can use that. Scroll of planar binding. That would, well, that would just bind it to this plane of existence. Yeah, we need something that'll make it come with us. I could try to charm the demon. I mean, we can go learn more about him. Maybe there's a library here. Maybe the shop creeper. Or we can just, you know, go for well, or we could go back to the magic shop and ask if they have a anything that would bind, make a demon come with us or bind a demon to us. Like a, like a flask? Like we have Rio in? Or ask, a scroll hey, we can buy or something? What? Let's ask Rio. He's a demon trapped in a flask. Oh, well, maybe that's not a good idea. Well, we could, we could ask him. Well, could Rio make, uh, could Rio seduce the demon to come with us? Demon to demon. Hmm. Maybe. But what if Rio backstabs us and tells the demons who we are? Well, the thing is, can can he do that, or is he bound to you to, and to obey you? Well, he doesn't really obey. He's more like bound to the flask that I hold. So, but I mean, he has to be useful somehow. Maybe. Maybe he could sense what kind of demons they were, or who they who they worshipped. Well, here's a thought: Is it even our responsibility to our villages are safe? And I mean, we could tell. The emperor or empress, whichever is what's going on here, and then it would then fall on them to take care of the demon problem. What if they are the demon problem? Then? Well, that's what I was trying to discover by coming here. Hmm. Does Rio know how to scry? The demon? Yeah. Do you want to take the demon out of the iron flask and hand that demon a magic item? No, like, I, I didn't know if he could just, like, it was like a, maybe like an innate ability. Or... We don't know enough about Rio to know his abilities, and maybe he's like a divination wizard or something. I think we need to know what the Duke is up to and what his intentions are. And we need to know why. I feel like we need to take that flask and fill it with holy water and kill that demon. Well, we gotta make it useful first. Like, well, as much information as we can, and it is bound to us. Well, demons are tricky things. Hmm. Whether it's bound to us or not, really remains to be seen. I take out the iron flask and I, I summon Rio. Rio appears in the room, this time in the form of a uh, drow fee. Oh, see? Now you're back to your old self. Or at 
least the self that I like you in. So, you are bound to me, Leo. Oh, and these are my companions. You already know Conan, and this is not. And this is Rio, my demon. Well, so a friend of mine, well, Nock just talked about putting holy water into your flask and killing you. And I thought about it for a little while, because I thought, what do I get for having you? I mean, I'm not going to sell you to that drow, so if that's how you think you're going to escape me, you're not. I'll kill you. So, what can you do for me? I've never, I never know what holy water in your flask would do to you. So, the demon looks at you and goes, is there something you would like me to do? What can you do? Well, what would you request? I look at Nox and I go, And then I look back at Rio and I, I say, Do you have any knowledge of this village, uh, Cherry Blossom? The township? Yes. I know some things about it. Well, tell me those things. Do I get anything for being nice to you? Well, we'll see. And Ezra kind of like, like, lays on the bed with like her hand, like, kind of like, under her head, kind of looking at the demon. Was there something specific you want to know? Well, there's a lot of demons here, other than yourself, and we want to know why they're amassing here and we want to know more about the duke wong and as you may not know yoko who was the baroness of cherry blossom was assassinated so you you mean my former master i i had Caught on. But don't be sassy. I mean, so yeah, she's dead, and now it's taken over by a duke, and he's amassing a large group of demons, and we want to know why. Or he's not amassing a large number of demons, and we want to know why there are a lot of demons here, and who they serve. Well, First, do you know what the most valuable thing is about the town of Cherry Bluff? The amount of drow women? No, but they're there for a reason. Well, the Fabian Empire? No, it's there for a reason. And Ezra kind of ponders because she doesn't know a lot about drow, so she kind of is, you know. What reason? Well, for that answer, I would like to be free for one day to stretch my legs and be free of the bottle. I'll give you the answer. look at Rio and I say, I grow tired of these games. Your life is in my hands now. You treat me with so much disrespect that you would never treat your former mistress. I can kill you very slowly. 
you are bound to me for eternity and I live a very long life and I can make every minute of that for you suffering. So you serve me and you obey me. There is no you get this or you get anything. You get to live. That is all you get. If I deem it necessary to not make every minute of your life a miserable, painful existence, then that is a mercy. And like, Ezra is like slowly getting angry. Well, just for you know, I can't actually be killed on this plane of existence. Well, what you might not actually know is I can cross planes. Make me a deception check. I feel like freaking Plankton. Like, you ever hear Plankton when he's like, and your life will be. Like, every time I try to sound like threatening, I feel like freaking Plankton from SpongeBob. Doing deception? Ah, yes. Within the bounds of this city is a simple doorway that, with the right key, takes you to the city of doors. Knock and Conan, and I go, City of Doors? You know of this place? Not me. No. Find out more. Tell us more about this. Where do these doors lead to? Are there dimensions like where you come from? The different heavens and the different hells. All the planes of existence you know of and several you don't. How do we destroy it? We could use it. How do we destroy it? Well, how would we destroy it? I don't know. Where is the key to be found? You can buy a key from the magic shop. Well, it's one of the reasons they has any interest in this backwater village. Hey, this is a very nice village. Hmm. Different hells and different dimensions, eh? Heavens, hells, key to the door. So, and Ezra's kind of like has like a like sense of like wonderment on her face. She's just like so different. I don't think we should destroy it. I mean, I don't think we can destroy it. I think we should use it. I mean, what? what are the places like in the City of Doors? Is it, is it beautiful? Well, you know, one could buy a key and go take a look for themselves. Well, have you been? I am very old, and I have been to many, many places. And you offer nothing in return after I've already given you such wonderful information. 
Mm -hmm. He's got a point. But he doesn't have a point. Don't, don't. And don't entice him. He's childish. So, so here's what we know. Thavian Empire is here. They're using the city of doors. But why? Other than they can get around quickly, but they can teleport for that. Like, is it? I'm missing something, or I'm overthinking their power. Hmm. I look at Nock and Klanon and I go, this city of keys, or city of doors, is it, I don't think we could destroy it, but I'm, I think that's how the demons are coming through. Uh, what do you exactly. Do? Well, well, is there a way we could seal the door? I'd like to destroy it. That way no one comes through and it can never be unsealed. Second to that, I'd like to seal it. Cave in whatever's around it and make it inaccessible. Then the demons can no longer come through. Problem solved. But they can, I mean, they can come through still. I look at Rio and I go, if we destroy this door, what happens then? No, oh, you'd probably just make a mortal enemy out of whoever made the door. Do you know who made the door? No. Are you lying? No. Is there a way to compel the demon to tell the truth? Do they have pastries downstairs? <laughs> yes, they do. I go downstairs and get some cookies and pastries. I... And bring them back up to the demon. Do you get? Do you give him a? Do you give him one? Sure. Oh. I give him two cinnamon rolls. Does he eat them? They're pastries. They're devil's food. <laughs> Sweets are evil. Have you ever had a cinnamon roll? How does he take to these sweets? You're not 100% sure the demon that you're talking about is actually masculine, but it's fully possible that it's not one thing or another because it's spirit to begin with. Rio is for the area that you're in a, a, a feminine name like Susan. There's not a whole lot of guys named Susan. But does he like the, the uh, cinnamon roll? Of course he does. He's been stuck in a flask for a thousand years. I like him and I've just friggin had one yesterday. Okay, so you have now fed cinnamon. What do you do next? We ask him, you know, like, you know who made the door? No, oh, no charge. No. We just gave you cinnamon rolls. It doesn't mean I know who made the door. Oh. The city I'm talking about has 10 million doors. This just happens to be one that opens and closes. Right, so they won't mind that much that we destroy one. Thanks for your time, Rio. Plug this flask. You can plug the flask, but if you don't know the command word, it doesn't do a whole lot. Well. You just look very silly. I, then I go, okay, well, can you... If we're to 
introduce you to another demon, would you know who they served? I'll check them out loud. I like when it's bait. Unless he or she served my mistress, I couldn't promise anything. Well, here's what we need you to do. We need you to capture one of these demons. But not in a way, like in a seductive way. We need you to seduce one of the demons downstairs and bring them up here. Up here? Why up here? Where else would we bring them? I mean, somewhere outside the city, in the woods. Okay. Maybe we'll pay for the night. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> well, then we can... Yeah, let's... Well, yeah, we can go back to, um... The city... Right next to this one. That had a bunch of demons in it. Uh, no, there was one just to the, uh, east of here. Demonist looks at you and goes, you, you know that typically my kind don't get along, right? Well, then it's more for you to help us. Because if they hurt, if they kill me, what do you think is going to happen to you and your flask? You'll be sucking on demon toes. Demon toes. So what do you all do? I mean, we know that there's a door, well, the city of doors, and that does... Yeah, that's a good question. We could ask one of these demons we catch. I mean, then we have to leave. We have to leave the city and then send Rio in to capture this demon and bring it to us and then question the demon could capture it ourselves. Yeah. We could do that. We could also use the door. And well, I don't think anyone beyond the door would be too inclined to help us anyway. I have no interest in any plane besides this one. Except to keep people from other planes out. I look at Rio and I go, "What? how does this door help the Fabian Empire? I mean, it gives them access to other places, but they have that at any door. That's, that's I mean, you said it was significant here, and that's why they're in the middle of this kind of bumfuck nowhere, so... Why? What's the significance of this door to them? Make a uh, persuasion check. She just looks at her fingernails. I offer up another cinnamon roll. 
Make another persuasion check. <laughs> With a plus uh, 19. So, what was your question? Nice. What's the significance of this door? How does it help the Thavian Empire? How is it different from any other door? Because you typically can't march armies through doors. Oh. It's not... Oh, it's not just a a magical need it's a tactical advantage against any other nation that has the weakness of having such a portal and Thay is an empire how could we use this door for our advantage where is the door exactly Well, to a degree, you've already walked through it several times. Magic shop? Is there a school you demons go to to talk in riddles? Yeah, it's it's a teacher. A, it's called the School of Hard Knocks. Whoa. So the magic shop then. That's the portal, or where the door is. How did you come up with that? It's the only place we've walked in multiple times other than this tavern. Or the Grey Griffin Inn. That's it. We've only... Those are the only two places we've walked in multiple times in this city. She asked, can she have another cinnamon roll? Uh, sure, if we haven't eaten them all, yeah. Well, we haven't, but... Answer me this, and I'll give you the other cinnamon roll. Is... Is the door... In the magic shop? No. But you can get a key from there. Is the door in the Grey Griffin Inn? And she responds, there might be a reason that you're seeing people at a certain table a lot. I look at Nock and I look at Conan and I go... You remember those guys we saw yesterday? They're always huddled over there? Yep, in that one corner. Yeah. I, hmm, I give her the cinnamon roll, and I turn back to Nock and Conan, and I say, so what's your plan? We could, we could leave the city, capture a demon, question the demon, see what they're doing here, we could go to the magic shop, get a key, and then go into the door. But we can't just destroy the... If we can... If we find the door, we could destroy the door, but then we'd have to fight the demons who are guarding the door. That's fine. Yeah, I agree. So... You guys want to walk downstairs and just start wrecking the door? Like, where these demons are sitting? I just feel like there might be a better way, maybe? I might be wrong. I mean... Knocking heads together is always fun. Hmm. I mean, it might not be in that corner. Uh... I mean, they're always in that corner, but 
I guess I guess the question is, how do we recognize where the door is? You could go to the magic shop and ask if they have keys that you can purchase, and they'll tell you where the door is. I say we go back to the magic shop. We question the the storekeeper, Rio, if she's there. And then we get a key, and then we find the door, and then we destroy the door. And then we take on the demons that come, and then kill the duke. So I assume the doors are magical portals. Can we just dispel magic? We have a uh, dispel magic scroll. Would we just would we just bring it to where we think the door is and just use it? I don't know how they work. I feel like you're we're the man. You're the wizard. Well, I feel like we're trying to solve a mystery, and I am. I just want to destroy the door. That's all I really want out of this. Destruction, total annihilation of the door. No more demons ever coming through. And then I'll kill every demon here one by one till they're all. Yeah, having a having a, a, a portal to another another dimension is not a good thing. I feel like whatever we do here, if the door's still open, they're just gonna keep coming. Yeah. Alright. I say we go. I mean, if we use the spell magic, I don't necessarily know how that would work. Like, I, I have the spell, but, I mean... I mean, that seems way too easy. But, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes the easiest thing is, you know, people replace engines in cars when they simply needed gas. So maybe it is as simple as dispelling magic. I find that hard to believe because the, you know, demigods named Leyland probably wouldn't make that happen. <laughs> well, then I think, I think we need to go to the magic shop and get a key. And then we act like we're using the door normally and then we destroy it. I mean, I'd like to go to the magic shop and ask them, uh, how do, do we destroy the door to other dimension? Well, but well, I have the feeling the magic shop wants the door here. So they're not going to tell you that information. And letting them know we know about the door may not be the best course of action either. They don't know what we want with the door. For all they know, we, we want to use the door. Well, why don't we go downstairs and see if we can uh, find the door, if it's perceptible to us, if we can find it. Okay. I, mm, I think if we don't, we got to put Rio away or go censor or something. I don't know. I just... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, put him back in the bottle or whatever it is. Yeah, I say... So next time, and we might bring you some more sweets. So, goodbye. And then I put him in the flask. Okay. And then we go downstairs to see if we can, if there's some way that we'll be able to see the door, or if there's like a, like, I don't know, signs on it or something? Like a symbol, I mean?
So what you doing, Robo? You run it over and jump it on top of their table? I thought about it, but then I decided I shouldn't jump. That's just rude. Are, the, are the, those four still there? There's four there. It's not those four. I look under the table. I'm not even trying to hide. I just look under the table. Do I see a door? Is there no. a painting on the wall? Anything like that? No. I asked this one to my right. How'd you get here? She points towards the front door. Wow. What's that thing in the middle of the table? Is that a, like a lantern? Yes. I jiggle it. You know, there are steps that go down to a basement. The bar. four uh, armored women seem to be getting offended by your presence at this point. I say, excuse me, I'm just looking for a portal. And then I walk. I, I I I leave really slowly. As they get up to follow me, because I really want them to. Uh no. Oh, when I go back. <laughs> I, I, I get, scoot you over. Can I can I squeeze onto the side of the seat <laughs> for this one? Make me a persuasion check. I watch from the side. I mean, we got to do something. We're at a standstill here. Well, Ezra, you're a magical creature, right? Yeah. Well, wouldn't this portal put off some kind of magic? Can you can you detect magic? I mean, I ask him. I mean, you know, excuse me, guys. Really, I'm. You know, I'm. I'll only take a second of your time. Do you know where this portal? I cast detect thoughts on the one that he's talking to. Sometimes you just gotta be direct. The uh, woman in red armor is literally thinking about the front door. But when she's looking at the front door in her mind, it's surrounded by a, a, a halo of light where all the cracks and crevices. All right, I look at her. Say thank you so much. Persuasion roll again. I mean, I'm not trying to persuade her or anything, but no, it's not that. They're just really annoyed with you. They just haven't gotten so annoyed that they're they've drunk. Okay, all right. Well, thanks for your time and. Uh, Mosey back over to some table far away from this. Oh, I, I sit here and I try to get close enough so I can hear what they're talking about. 
What languages do you speak? Are. Oh, Draconic and Elvish. Damn. And Common. Elvish. Yeah, they're they're not speaking in any language you know. It's a sharp, mean, and almost guttural language that they're speaking back and forth. Can I cast tongues? Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Never. I thought it worked the other way around. Anyway. I thought it meant that I could, like, hear what they were saying, but I think it's kind of reversed. That's that's how it works. You just yeah, you have to have it go off on yourself. And you can understand it, right? That's right. Yeah, can I cast that on myself? Do you have that spell? Wow. Well, it's a third level spell. I'm a fifth level uh, wizard. Um, I don't know how wizards work. Like, do you do you just know all the wizard spells and only can cast so many of them? Or? No, you have. Um, if I had to prepare which ones you wanted to use that day, you have four. Um, well, I had four first level spells, three second level spells and two third level spells and i used um the two third level spells and i have two or the two second level spells and i have one more second level spell and then i haven't used any of my third level spells and this would be a third level spell yes but you only have seven total uh spells prepared and tongues wasn't one oh. you're talking about your spell slot Yeah, like I think you can have a spell book full of like tw you can have like 20 first level spells but you can only cast four that you prepared that day but they have to be those specific four spells. No, you're you're thinking of first edition. The way that it works wow. now is they get a total number of spells and they can change what spell slots they're using and even cast it at higher levels, which is very different than the way that it was in the past. And some of them, if they're cast as higher level spells, actually have additional effects. Yeah, I haven't, like, the only thing I have really is Charm Person and Detect Thoughts, and I don't have uh, Tongues Ready. I didn't prepare it, so it's not in the spell slot. So, okay, that might be fun. I mean... Well, I can't understand them, so I go back over the logo, and I look at Conan, and I go... They're, they're obviously not speaking common or anything, and they are demons, so... Could it be that this restaurant is the portal? I mean, we could burn this place down. I <laughs> mean, the door to the restaurant. Oh, we could burn this place down. And it would probably take care of the portal and the demon. It looks like it's made out of stone. We could have the golems tear this place down. Can you cast Dispel Magic? No. I mean, I can tomorrow. Then tomorrow we'll come down and cast Dispel Magic on the door? Yeah. I... Maybe the... I don't know, maybe the door's stronger, but I can. I mean, maybe, maybe, but maybe not. I would hate to, you know, deal with this for 20 years and then find out all we had to do was cast Dispel Magic on the door. If this isn't the portal, we're going to look really dumb. Well, 
Okay, then. Maybe ask the barmaid if there's a library in town. And, you know, we, you can go and read some books about uh, dimensional doors. You're a wizardy person, right? Don't you read a lot of books? I do, but I just yeah. I can go to the. It's not so boring to now. See, now you're wishing you didn't pick wizard, aren't? Because <laughs> sitting there reading books all day doesn't seem appealing. No, it's just I don't know. Like I could learn about dimension doors, but the strength of one could be. It's kind of like as people kind of, for you. Oh, I love magic uses fireballs. I blow shit up. What do you mean? I got to. Well, I mean, technically, I'm a sorcerer, but I can't play that in fifth edition. So I had to choose wizard and I don't like it. So I am going to the magic shop. I'm going to ask directly. I, I'll take a lesson from you, knock and just ask them directly where this portal is and and yeah and how strong this portal is because i'm a wizard and i might be wanting to gain this information for my own personal knowledge okay okay a whiz of a whiz if ever no. a wonderful whiz there was when you go there and you um uh, you talk to whoever is there because I don't really feel like talking to an elf. But when you go and talk to whoever's there, just pretend that you want the door to be there. When you ask if the door can be dispelled or destroyed, you want to know so that you can prevent it from happening. Like you're scared of it getting dispelled or destroyed. You're like, oh no, what if someone destroys the door? I mean, how would they even do that? And maybe she'll tell you. But don't say, how can I destroy the door? Well, either way, I hope I'm more convincing than I, I then yeah, I know what you mean. I'll, I'm very persuasive. I could pretend that I'm trying to protect the door from the demons. I pet Merlin. This is gonna be all. Oh, this is all just gonna go perfectly easy, isn't it? <laughs> well, while Ezra goes to the magic shop, I'm gonna stay here because my supper is really ready. So. I'm going to have to leave here in a couple of minutes. All right. We will stop here for tonight then. Oh, okay. And we'll come back to it.